Big tip alert, big tip alert. This tip is so huge that I should seriously charge you guys for it. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not gonna do that, at least not for this video. This is called EQ frequency sweeping, or just frequency sweeping for short. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's gonna save you a lot of time when equalizing tracks. It's gonna make things a hell of a lot easier and it's a trick that engineers have been doing for decades, you know, just out of impulse that you might not have ever tried doing, but it works and it's a lot easier to do with digital because nothing changes and we have everything at the tip of our fingertips. At the tip. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Let's get to the, uh, the screen capture. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using the DMG Audio Equilibrium plugin, which I'll be reviewing in a future video. Any EQ that has a Q control or bandwidth control, same thing, will work. So I got to uh, load up a band here, a peak band. And the trick is there's two tricks to this. First, to find the bad frequencies, clutter, that you don't really need in your track, especially if your track, uh, if your mix has a ton of tracks, the more clutter you can clear out, the better. So what I'm gonna do is boost this all the way to 18 decibels and adjust my cue so it's tighter to maybe right there. I don't want it like extreme, but I don't want it too wide either. And then what I'm gonna do, because I can't talk while this is playing, is I'm gonna slowly go through these frequencies like this and listen for something that just doesn't sound good to me. So I'll start at the very beginning. Okay, right there, I'm hearing like a kind of a hollow sound. This is typically the sound of the uh, the, whole, the sound hole of, of the acoustic guitar. So we'll see how much I can reduce of this. So once you find the frequency, what you want to do is make it wider once you do the cut. Typically, I won't cut any higher than uh, 6 to 8 decibels. I mean, you can go extreme if you really want to, but it all depends on the quality of your, e of your equalizer. So I'm going to go wider and listen. Okay, and it's important that when you do this, if there's a transition in the arrangement, you know, so like this is the intro slash course guitar part, I'm going to keep repeating this because this part right there where it starts at uh, 12 seconds. 12.3 seconds approximately. Um, I'm going to play this in a loop. So I got my first, I got my first bad frequency out and I'm going to add another band. Same cue, pretty tight. Boost it. And then I'm going to find my second problem frequency area.
It's got a little bit of whistling going on. Now, th- that's that's going to happen because this is an extreme boost, but we'll see what happens when we cut it. It doesn't seem to be affecting the tone that much, so we're okay with cutting that. We'll see if there's any other issues. Again, boost to 18, narrow the bandwidth, the Q, about 20. Again, for this particular song, it's a full band mix, so I want to get as much junk out of the acoustic guitar track as I can. One thing I didn't do is enable the analyzer, which you can see the frequencies a little bit better, or a little bit better, a lot a bit better, if you're into that tw- type of thing. I'm seeing a lot of energy at around the 80 hertz to 100 mark, which could collide with the kick drum and bass guitar. So I might want to take some of that out. I did use a high pass filter when it was recorded. So that's why you don't really see a lot of energy passed around 75 hertz. See how it rolls off. Okay, so I'm going to reduce right around the 80, I'll put it right at 90 hertz. And if you boost that area, I guarantee you there's something there. Like, well, obviously there's something there, but let's, let's see what it, how it sounds. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's play it bypassed and then on. So this is bypassed. Sounds good to me. It retains the character of the acoustic guitar, but it gets rid of some of the mud, um, some of the stuff that would clutter a mix up. Again, with a full band arrangement, you don't want the guitar to sound that full because it's just more adding to the track unnecessarily. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there's only so much you can pack into a mix and um, you want to retain the original characters of the acoustic guitar. So another trick to find the bad frequencies we boost but to find the good frequencies, the ones that we don't want to get rid of, you can cut. So let's, for example, let's start around uh, 5,000 hertz area. Obviously, we don't want to get rid of that. I started there because that's one of the um, the areas of an acoustic guitar you don't want to get rid of. But, you know, for any instrument, you can see really, you know, without the graph, you would just go through and cut. 
again, extreme 18 decibels. Make that cue narrow, but not too narrow. Here how it takes just way too much away from the guitar. But then these frequencies aren't really taking too much away, so we could probably even cut some more. Now it's getting too thin. That's probably too thin now, but again, it's all about the context of the mix. It might sound bad soloed, but in the mix is where it matters. So this frequency tr sweep trick is something that I do all the time. And you know, you can do it for any EQ plugin that has a cue on it as long as um you're listening. Listening is the key. And um I think this is a little bit easier on a hardware EQ, but you know, either way, you'll find your bad frequency, you'll find your good frequency, you'll know which ones to cut, which ones to boost, or which ones to not touch. That's what this is all about. Frequency sweeping. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com. I should start putting bloopers at the end of videos. <laughs> if my video about which recording levels are proper, the best ones, the idea, I gotta, I gotta do it again because of this, this refrigerator is turned on.